Hello and welcome to part two of the Talk Toys 2021 wrap up. Uh, so we're continuing on from where we left off in part one. Chances are, if you haven't seen that, this. I mean, actually, you could probably just jump into this anyway, because we will be talking about different subjects. But as a general rule, I have gathered my three friends here. Tim. Hello. Uh, Tom. How's it going? And Dan. Hey. Cool. Uh, and and so we're, we're here to discuss more topics and basically what we've been doing in 2021 and what we've been enjoying. Uh, so much like part one, these are not necessarily topics of 2021 specifically, but they're things we've done in 2021. I'll explain more as we go through the topic. So, in this episode, we have four topics. That's one extra from last time. So that means one extra round of things to discuss, because that's how that works. But anyway, let's get straight into it. So, the next topic to discuss in 2021 is the best TV show. So, by TV show... Um, I've kind of extended it, so I can't remember what we did last year exactly, but TV show I've extended to mean, uh, if you haven't really watched much TV show, maybe a YouTube series of videos or even anime, um, because I thought, well, there's no point giving too many categories. Anime so, counts. yeah, I mean, anime is a TV show. It airs on TV and assuming it's not an anime movie, it's, it still counts. So. To kick it off, I shall begin with my choice. So, I've actually gone with an anime this year, and I've chosen Hunter x Hunter, or Hunter x Hunter, it's, it's pronounced in two very different ways, usually. But... I think it's Kiss Exis. Kiss, Kiss Exis is the one <laughs> I definitely get it confused by, um, and it turns out the Blu-rays aren't Hunter x Hunter after all. They're all really did, but oh uh, well. Um, so, Hunter x Hunter, how... How do I define it? Well, put simply, Hunter x Hunter is a sort of shounen anime. Um, but for those who have seen it, or for those who have like heard things about it, you'll probably realise that Hunter x Hunter isn't really just a standard shounen show. It's, it's often kind of held up as one of the best. And to be honest, having watched the majority of it this year, although with 148 episodes, I did watch some last year as well, I fully agree with our sentiment. Um, I'm just going to come out of the gate and say that Hunter x Hunter is probably the best created shonen I have ever watched. And not even in the sense of, oh, the characters were the best, or the fights are the best or something, but it is the best produced shonen um, I have ever seen. It it really it really put other shonen series to shame. And but- like... Without going too much into it, and without gushing about it, because I might have an upcoming video sort of soon to discuss it more in depth. Um, I Basically, I, I want to typify in two points the reason why I think this is the best shounen, and probably one of the best anime, is that A, it doesn't have any fillers, and B, it doesn't waste any time either, uh, which I was very impressed with. I mean, I'll, I'll give a very quick example. There's a part in it, where a character loses the ability to use Nen, which is their kind of key or chakra or whatever it is. Uh, and the mention is, you will regain your abilities in one month. So I was like, okay, that'll be like seven or eight episodes, maybe. You know, it'll, Training arc. Yeah, it'll, it'll make it interesting. You know, I, I, I can do with that. So the next episode kind of focused on a few other characters, uh, not the main characters. And then the last episode, uh, the ap- episode after that, uh, one of the characters mentioned, like, so it's been a month, how are you feeling? Uh, which kind of blew me out the water uh, in terms of shonen, because I have watched all of Bleach, I have watched all of Naruto and Naruto Shippuden, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of used to it now, I'm almost desensitised to like all the fillers and all the like long drawn out plots, and by God, Hunter and... Honestly, Hunter x Hunter... At some points, I feel, went a little bit too quick. Uh, there were, there were some plots that's like, oh, oh, wow, we've we've gone past that really quickly. Um, and honestly, it's just such a joy to watch. It really reminds me of original Dragon Ball, where it's about like the whimsy and like journey of the world. I mean, th- there's lots of fights and stuff, and there's lots of shonen like, oh no, he's learned a new power. I must reveal my new power, kind of stuff. So. 
if you're not no. into Shonen, yeah, I, I don't think you'll enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not to just uh, take a massive shit all over your recommendation, hmm. but I remember trying to get into Hunter x Hunter, and I think I gave up on the episode of the uh, what was that running guy? Yeah, yeah, uh, you the, know, the start of the Hunter exam. I, I think mean, that's the thing. Yeah, to be I honest, mean, Dan, was, I, if yes, I was to make on. an analogy. I kind of agree with you in the same sense that I played Bloodborne and I died a lot in that village at the start. <laughs> so it's like, I, I, I get, honestly, it, it is a bit of a slow start because Hunter x Hunter is a massive world. The The, the point of it is it's sort of, it takes place, you know, it, it's, it's not just on the continent or in a fighting dojo, it's sort of, it's everywhere. And like, it, it takes a while to set up characters, but mm. as mm. with, a lot of like long running series and stuff the kind of appeal of the series is the characters themselves because they all they all have motivations they all do stuff they don't just feel like i'm following the protagonist around because i am the second person do you have person. big anime boobs um do they have big anime boobs do not necessarily boobs? A, I need to know for research a lot oh, of characters actually well the the two main characters in hunter x hunter are 10 or 11 i don't know but they're, they're kids, but yeah, it's honestly, it's. I'll Hunt... let them off then. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, honestly Hunter x Hunter is like, there's a reason people hold it so highly, in terms of like anime in general and especially shonen. It's just, it's such a, I don't know, it's such a journey. It's it's so like unique and everything that, yeah, I I definitely recommend it. Not as a. I wouldn't recommend her as a marathon watch. I wouldn't say, sit down, 148 episodes, go. But, like, I definitely say, like, sit down for, like, watch an arc and then, you know, give it a give Sometimes, it a Sometimes, yeah, like, with some <laughs> animes, you got to have, like, a breather hmm. from an arc. Because... Specifically Shonen, I think. Yeah. Mm. Shonen's quite... They, yeah. They're obviously... There's a lot of exposition in the start. And yeah. I think probably... Not just Hunter x Hunter is guilty of this, but a lot of longer animes have a very long wind-up. I think hmm. even, not particularly long, but Attack on Titan, I couldn't get into it. Because hmm. like, it was quite a long build-up to anything mm. actually happening. Yeah, like, it's... I mean, I, I definitely would... I definitely would say it, it's comparable to a sort of... I don't know. I, I, it's it's comparable to a sort of like trilogy or quadrilogy of books or something. In that, mm. you can read the first book, but you're never gonna get that like hypest stuff, the like ultimate payoff of four books in one book. Uh, in in the same here, the like, if you're just in it to watch like a twenty episode anime, don't. I I wouldn't even pick it up. It's it's not. You know, it's it's not that kind of thing. But it's it's the kind of anime that like I watched over the space of two years. I was like, yeah, I was, I was enjoying. Hunter X Hunter. For some reason, I, Hunter X Hunter makes me feel like a boomer, because <laughs> no, no, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen. I haven't seen a single episode of it. Hmm. But back in the day, you know, when I was a wee lad, and I used to see like adverts and things, and you know, like um, like manga looking through the shops and stuff, and I yeah. saw like a shonen one like narrowed to a bleach i'd see it and i'd be like oh my fucking god that looks so cool i need to go home and watch this because it looks fucking insane mm. and what hunter x hunter i i see it and i'm like Man, that just looks like an anime and i think yeah. that probably says more about me than it does anything about hunter x hunter but it makes me feel like oh well i, I lost that childish child i will say I will say, there's not even necessarily the coolest shown characters in Hunter x Hunter. Sort of, there, there, there are cool characters, obviously, but, I mean, there are characters that's like, oh, your powers are kind of cool. Yeah, they're, they're interesting. But, like, honestly, it, it's just hard to... I'm going to make a video on why I loved it, sort of, like, soonish, because there's a lot of things that make it work that don't make other shonen work, if that makes sense. Like... Naruto and Hunter x Hunter are night and day. There is, it's phenomenal. But yeah, that, that the is. pissing scenes were great though. The pissing scenes were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm, I think that was Hunter x Hunter. I, uh, yeah, check, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's need definitely to, Hunter x Hunter. You check that's, out that's this uh, to... collector's edition Blu-ray that I bought just to double check. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, right. Unless anyone else has anything to add, 
uh, happy to yep. Yep. throw it over. I can go next if you want, because yeah. I've also got an anime. Hey, there we are. Um, and one I just finished watching, and I watched it in the space of a few days because it was absolutely captivating to me. Mm. Um, so I finished it, I think, yesterday, and my anime is Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. Ah. Which... Now that one's got big booby ladies, right? That one's that... got big booby. Thuggies, I has... think. Isn't that it one... isn't it more yeah. thuggies than than boobs? Am I right, Tom? <laughs> no. A bit of both. Oh, there we both. are. There we are. Um, honestly, uh, I think I think um, it's a bit of a meme with like these light novel adaptations and them having long names like this, but. Um, I didn't know much about it, and on the surface of it, before I knew anything about it, I thought, oh, it's a, it's a typical harem or something. But it's not. It, it really isn't. Um, and I think if you look at it and think that, then you're missing out on something great. So basically, it's like a bit of a mix of Steins Gate and the melancholy of Harry Suzumiya. Hmm. Both of which are, yeah, they, you know, they have their fan servicey characters that everyone likes, but they've got really deep stories that, honestly, at the end of the series, I, I, I did cry, and there isn't much that can do with that to me because it really sets some emotions off on me. Hmm. So, just to go into it briefly. Um, Please don't cry. I, I won't cry. It's only... <laughs> cry if you need like, to. Cry if you need to. Yeah. Listen to Dan. You can cry if you yeah, want. Yeah, if, if you want to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Need this time. Um, it's a very short one. Uh, it's 13 episodes. There is a movie, which I haven't seen yet, which kind of follows up directly after. So I'm excited to see that. But um, <laughs> I think Ridian told me before I got into it, it's more of an anime about quantum physics. Yeah, so I, I've uh, I've never seen it, but I do remember watching a YouTube video a while ago. I can't remember who it was that made it, but it was it was the whole concept of like don't judge a book by its cover thing and like it it was that meme of like what I watched, what I expected, what I got and the sort of as Tom said, it's very much the, oh, she's an attractive anime girl. Oh, yeah, I'm going to watch an anime, but a sassy anime girl. And I came I came for the anime girl. I stayed for the the really, really heart-wrenching plot. Um, so I'm going to go into it briefly. But, like, basically, there are a group of people in this school, and they have... Uh, they have this, like, mysterious thing happen to them that's known... Like, as all, like, they're all known as um, adolescent syndrome. So something will happen to them that's related to some sort of trauma they're going through. Hmm. Um, so the thir- I'm not going to say all of them. I'm just going to mention the first one because it's explained straight away. But um, basically, Maya, who is the bunny girl... Mm-hmm. Um, her thing is, she she's walking around a library in a bunny girl outfit, and the main character sees her, and he's like, why is she walking around like that? And no one else can see her. Um, so, basically, that's linked to some trauma that she's had, and why no one can else can see her. Uh-huh. So the main character basically goes through trying to work out what the problems are, what issues these people have. And when they're kind of, like, solved, Hmm. when they come to a conclusion, they work out what it is, like, the the adolescent syndrome, the symptom of it is disappears. Ah. And um, I think it has a lot of redeeming aspects. I think the relationship between the two main characters is... It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> hmm. Like, absolute couple's goals, I think. Um, it's it's just such a heart-wrenching series. 
I don't know how to explain it more without really spoiling it, but it's really mm. pulled me in. And like I said, I watched it over a few days, so me 13 episodes long. Nice. Um, but I highly recommend it. I was going to pick something else on you, but then I thought about it and I thought, no, this this series has definitely had um, the most impact on me. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the movie now. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely on my list. I'm. I will get round to it one day, along with the hundreds of other series I have. But yeah. Nice. Uh, who would like to go next with their series recommendation or pick, rather? I'll, I'll jump in next. Cool. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring this back. So you. Um. You know. You imminent tortoise regulars may remember last year when when we talked about things we're looking forward to in ah. 2021. You remember when I when I was asked this question, I said I'm looking forward to the Marvel TV series that are coming out. Oh yeah. So I'm going to go for a bit of a normy pick. Uh, you know, you've gone through your weeb section. I'm going to go a little bit normy. I'm going to say my my favorite one this year is I'm 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 going to say Loki, hmm. but also One Division as a as a um, as a sub note. Um, they're kind of in the same universe. So, uh, yeah. Either, either or, either or. But yeah, yeah, I said last year that I was looking forward to them, and yeah, they, they delivered everything I wanted. I remember saying specifically that I didn't know where they were going to go with it. And mm. with One Division especially, I didn't know where they were going to go for it up until the episode started airing. So I was really um, surprised that they went in kind of an experimental way with it, because obviously we all know the Marvel movies are very formulaic. They, this happens, this happens, the good guys win, hooray, the bad guys defeated. But the way they went about it and the character arc of, um, of you know, Scarlet Witch and that, it, it kind of kept me on my toes. And it kind of played a little bit more with, you know, it's not just heroes versus villains because she's fucked up and she does some weird stuff. And then they followed it up with Loki and Loki was even better because <laughs> yes. it, it just kind of, I think there was this kind of doom in my head of like, right, okay, they've done Endgame now. It's just going to all end now. The, the next genre of film is going to come in and be like oh we're done with superheroes now we're like going back to westerns or whatever but um the way they've kind of pulled these tv shows off has really set up really interesting things because what they've done in both of these shows kind of introduced this concept of the multiverse which just opens up so many doors they can go down and so many things they can do and pull in different ideas and set up different interesting things and Loki especially sets up another big bad, which I won't go into for spoiler reasons. Um, but the way they've done it is kind of just, yeah, yeah. I mean, people criticize it for being, you know, kind of generic y. But I think you can't really apply that to these new Disney Plus Marvel shows because they are pretty interesting and do things that haven't been done before. Especially with WandaVision and the way the first few episodes kind of have this off-putting kind of TV from different decades aesthetic, which mm. is a really interesting way to kind of get people on board and kind of uh, showcase how weird the universe is and shows there's something wrong with it. And the way it kind of slowly makes you think, all oh, right, okay, not not everything is, uh, is as it seems, um, was done really well. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the performances in these TV shows have been weirdly good. Like um Elizabeth, Elizabeth I'm gonna get my lisp out. Elizabeth Olsen was really good in One Division, and um, Owen Wilson in Loki was just uh, I did not expect. Yeah, L- Owen Loki to be chucked into a fucking <laughs> a Marvel show, but he did such a good job with such a small character. It was weirdly impressive. Loki really caught me off guard because it. I, I was up for watching a lot of these just as a kind of like ah uh, you know I'll watch an episode a day or whatever and you know. And like I, I really liked One Division, but yeah, Loki was just another. It was just another level. Like every episode I watched was like, wow, this. The, the, like even if you stripped away the Marvel veneer of it, if you know, if you just like, mm. if this came out as its own TV show, was like, this is really cool. This is really like interesting and stuff. And as you say, like, I never thought I'd really like. Um, the actor that plays Loki, what's his name? Um, Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston, yeah. Like, I, I 
I genuinely, you know, I kind of liked him in the movies, but he's always like, oh, yeah, there's the fangirls or whatever, whatever. But, like, by the end of Loki, it's like, I think he's one of my favourite characters. That's not something I expected. Mm. So, yeah, fully agree. Yeah, they did a really good job. And towards the end as well, the surprising thing with Loki is, um, like, the standout performance, aside from Owen Wilson, Richard E. Grant, which, um, you know, he's, he's been in a million things and had, like, not much screen time, and had that, uh, I can't really go into it without being particularly spoiler, but he pulled mm. off like a really, really good performance in the last few episodes as well. And yeah, I think given these, given these little, given these TV shows, and again, the thing it did well is it brought in lots of really little characters who didn't have any real significance in the other films, like Kat Dennings' character from Thor, just bringing them in and yeah. letting them kind of have their moment. And it, it really makes it feel like it's part of something bigger when you get these little small characters having bigger roles and expanded their backstories and yeah they just did it really well yeah for sure um right uh dan would you like to end our tv of 2021 section yes i will um so my pick is uh midnight mass ah oh Oh, you've actually seen that? Yes. Oh, I'm glad someone else has seen it. Go on, I... Dan. Okay, to me, this is a masterpiece of a uh, short, limited series. Um, mm-hmm. I thought every episode was just fantastic. So uh, so basically, the, the gist of it is a... Uh, I mean, this is this is not spoilerific at all. At the start of the episode, um, this uh, guy, um, one of the main characters, uh, uh, drink drives and he kills someone, and he's you know sent to trial um, and is put in prison for a few years. Uh, but uh, you know, after good behaviour, he's sent back. Uh, to his old uh, town, which is on a on an island, uh, and it's it's just pretty isolated out of you know, uh, and and so while he arrives, a another a new priest arrives, and he's quite charismatic, and uh, and basically brings this. Strange things happen to the town. Um, there's a lot of mysteries, and there's like a, a like a renewed sense of like, like, like religion appears in in the like dying town. Specifically, and... Catholicism. Yes, it's very hmm. important in the plot, like uh, Catholic themes and ceremonies. I think. Um... Yes, but what what um. I think what I really like about it, it's, uh, I mean, if we uh, to, to describe the entire show, it's like, basically, it's like a, I mean, the the show deals with grief, uh, but and it deals with faith and hmm. and how, like, it it looks into faith uh, in terms of like all of its, you know, problems, but also all of its, you know. The pros and cons of what a religion is, yeah. and you know, and and you you can see how it helps people, but you can also see how religion is used to manipulate people as well, and how it's used as a weapon, and it is a double-edged sword. And but uh, uh, but above all that, you've got a fantastic story, and it's very. It's, it's like, like all the episodes are great. Uh, it's but it's really unsettling, and uh, a lot of people do complain though that it's a bit of a slow boil. There's a lot of monologues, uh, but I think I think if, if people complain about monologues, I think I, I I don't know. I I I find the the slow boil of things just if if anything just adds to the to what you're watching and it's basic uh, and uh, and it leaves like to me like at the end of the series i was just like 
wow what 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 a series and mm. uh, long after the credits roll and i still think about it to this day and it ended it started it ended perfectly in my view it was i i and i try and think of a, another series like it and well well i i don't know there's a lot of like so so other series like like i mean breaking bad is a great tv series is one of the best but you know there's a lot of there's it's a long haul that one it's like, I, but I, this one only seven episodes and i it's one of my favorites i've ever seen so reference it back to episode one you should have watched it before this um it's very much like hereditary and its pacing i think ah. yes yes things <laughs> happen but they're quite sparsely happening hmm. um i think as well when you're talking about faith uh, an interesting theme in it, without spoiling anything, mm-hmm. is interpretation of scripture. Yes. Um, yes. And it's interesting because you look at all these faiths in the world and how, like, the Bible has been interpreted by different faiths to be different things. Different, yes. like, Christian faiths to be different things. And I like what it does with it. I very much like kind of like almost like the bastardization of an interpretation it gives hmm. oh yeah but in a good way and i think that's kind of a message of it is that the bible can be interpreted in very bad ways with seemingly innocent paragraphs but um i was <laughs> i was thinking about putting this as mine as well dan and uh i'm glad <laughs> you mentioned it now it's um, uh, absolutely phenomenal. I agree. I think the 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 cast are really good as well. Like the the performances. I think uh, the the guy who plays uh, the priest. I think is um, Hamish Linklater. I think his name oh, was. Oh yeah. And he performance wise is one of like not not just of like like TV but of film as well. I. I was just captivated by like his performance, and whenever he was on screen, you felt like, oh, you, 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 something's gonna happen, or and or and he he just captivates. Anytime he's on the screen, I just found yes, he's he's hmm. great, and uh, and uh, and that's my take on it. And I, um, honestly, I, I'm not gonna sound cheesy, but not that I've I've not been a. a I'm I'm not really a religious person at all, and uh, but but my my point uh, what I'm trying to convey is that um, there's sides to religion that you know th- th- there there are aspects of it that are that are, that can be good, but there are also aspects that are bad. And as I said, it's like a double edged sword. And how as Tom said, how people interpret that is uh, can be can be a problem as well but yeah check it out recommend oh, 100%, 100%. it 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah I've, I've heard good things it's on I, it's on my list but... the guy i've not heard do... of it at all did it come out this year yes i yeah. i see i i have mentioned it um because i really I fucking don't... liked it basically how i lo- found out about it uh hideo kojima on instagram just like like i i occasionally like like follow like his stuff and he just just he just posts like movie posters sometimes and just like or blu rays that he's bought yeah. and I'm ah, like, yeah. okay, okay, wherever Kojima. And I seal of approval. And Net- then I'm like, oh, okay. It's on Netflix, it's seven episodes long. You can't go wrong on this. Yeah, thing. Okay. Nice. Um, yeah I the guy, definitely you, might check out. The this the great thing about this as well, um I'm just gonna briefly go on. The guy did two other series called like The Haunting of Hill House Mike Flanagan. And, yes. Yeah. And the <laughs> funny thing was, he referenced Midnight Mass in the form of books in oh. those series. They were like on shelves. But those were based off actual books. Midnight Mass is his own creation, 100% his own creation. And I couldn't get in to his other two. But this, which he has made himself, was absolutely phenomenal. So yes. good mm. on him. Keep releasing more. Nice. 
Uh, right, well, on that topic, we shall uh, go on to the next uh, realm of realm of our choices for 2021, and that is books. Now, for the record for this as well, just to kind of make it a little bit more, you know, wide-ranging, I've also included audio books um, or At A Push podcast series, because, you know, they're, they're, they're vaguely similar. Um, so, I'm going to start with my nomination, and that is Mort by Terry Pratchett. Um, so people might be aware there's also like a TV show based on it or whatever, but obviously it started as a book. I think this is one of his earliest Discworld books. I want to say it was like three or four. Um, and for those of you that don't know, Discworld's kind of like an overarching world, um, that, you know, that everything is set in kind of like Middle Earth or Narnia, you know, Discworld is its own thing. Uh, so Mort follows... The Grim Reaper's Apprentice, basically, kind of bringing it back to the music choice here, in a sense. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, basically, Mort is like a gangly teenager who needs to get a job, and no one picks him. But eventually, the Grim Reaper does. Um, and honestly, it's just it's just a really good like story. It's quite um, for those who have read Terry Pratchett, it is very like proto. Terry Pratchett is very whimsical and like strange and stuff, um, but it's also like it's quite heartfelt. That you know there are genuinely it's really Im- funny as well. Yeah, it's honestly Pratchett writes well. My only the the only thing I'd compare him to is Douglas Adams, uh, author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mm. because he has such a way with words and wit and humour that it's not just oh, this is a funny man doing a silly thing, that there really are very cutting and subtle jokes, the sort of, you know, that... And he he makes references to a lot of very adult concepts, but he portrays it in such a way that, obviously, unless you really know what he's on about, like, he's, he's just mastered the English language. Um, and I think Moat is probably one of my favourite Pratchett books. I've read about four or five now. And it's... It's decently simple, um, but also it's like, it's kind of cool as well, which is strange, because usually his books are kind of goofy, like, you know, yeah. everyone's a bit of a carry-on character, kind of, you know, a very British sense of humour, but Mort has some really, like, kind of cool concepts, and it gets metaphysical and stuff, like, it's hard to go too in-depth without spoiling anything, obviously, mm. but... Yeah, I, I'd say if you're interested in Terry Pratchett at all, I'd say maybe start with Mort, because it's just, it really impressed me. Uh, you know, I was expecting a comfy read, I might, not something that stuck with me. I might take you up on on starting with that, because I tried to read Terry Pratchett a couple of times before, and this is something, something puts me off about it. I think mm. it is that kind of... It, 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 I think I was quite young when I started reading it. My grandfather yeah. was really into Terry Pratchett, and he ah. kind of was like, read the, read the books, Tim, read the books, Tim, <laughs> read, read the books. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll read the books. And it, I, it just, as a teenager, it, I just couldn't get, I couldn't get past the kind of it. It seemed too whimsical, and yes. I didn't really read past that. So I think from you know from you saying that and hearing other people talk about it as well. It's probably something I need. Uh, also, I give another, another problem. Well, I say problem. It's not bad that he's got uh, lots of books but some of them are like all right the disc world number four because uh, they're yes. all in a different world you're just like where do i start because i've got like a random terry i, I will book say in the, the house the really cool thing about the terry pratchett does is that he he's clearly planned the disc world because i've read as i say like four of his books now and each of them are about small groups of people, you know, around uh, Ankh-Morpok, usually, but in Discworld in general. And because I read, say, Going Postal, about the Postal Service, in Mort, there'd be reference to, like... Oh, well, sorry, not Mort, because it was earlier on, but in sort of, like, his other books, there'll be reference to, like, there's a strange vampire photographer. And if you'd not read any other books, you'd be like, cool, oh, okay... But having read the book, it's like, oh shit, I know all about this guy. So like, it's a very, 
in-depth universe. Like, everyone has links and uh, references and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, unless anyone else has anything to add, uh, who is up next with their book choice? Happy to I'll next. Oh, go on, go ahead, Oh, stalemate. I'll fight you for it. <laughs> um, I'm going to get mine out of the way, because to be completely honest with you, it's, uh, I mean, it's not a boring pick. It's just a kind of, it's kind of an obvious choice. And it's we'll not be like the judge of that. Each... <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't read anything physically this year. I've been shit again like I was last year and haven't picked up a book. But I have been listening to the audiobooks of The Lord of the Rings. Oh, I've been okay. To the, um, they've recently put some of them on Spotify. I, I don't know how they've got away with it. On Spotify, it's it, it's like a podcast, which is a, a podcast that is reading the book. It's an audio book in the form of a podcast. But um, they used the music from the film, and I mm. think they ripped it from a different audio book. So I don't know how they've got away with it. But they've been up there for a year or two. So, you know, clearly they've they've managed to get it on there somehow. But, you know, I've, I've got my premium subscription, so I was like, yeah, I'm, it's about time, you know. <laughs> it's about time I probably read... Um, well, I say read, took the books in, experienced the books. Yeah. Because um, I love the movies. So, you know, I was like, it's time, it's time. And yeah, um, as everyone says, it's it's, it's worth doing. I, I think I'm I'm like halfway through the second one. So I'm, I'm, uh-huh. I'm making my way through them. I'm halfway through the two towers. Um, but it's, they're really, they're really good. Um, I it, What hit me most about the differences between them is, I don't think they mentioned Tom Bombadil at all. Tom Bombadil, film. yes. 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 He's like, like something else, isn't he, Tim? He really is. And he seems like this, he's got this big presence in, in the books and, you know, plays a a very big part and I was like they did not mention him at all they didn't even give him like a fucking name check or something in the in the films did they so I was like and it's a really enjoyable part of the book as well I can maybe see why they didn't because it might have been kind of hard to convey but um but no I'm surprised it didn't come up at all because I really enjoyed those parts of it and I really enjoyed him as a character and the whole concept of him so yeah it was it was an interesting uh, a... interesting thing to I found him like he's a mixture of like whimsical strange and slightly unnerving as well yeah slightly terrifying in that yes. it's just oh he's he's fucking powerful like he, he can he can he can do shit but um yeah the way he's portrayed is this kind of like happy uh, bouncing around kind of happy singing to himself kind of guy i was like oh yeah um i i i shocked that they didn't include it but um yeah Really enjoying listening to it on on the um, audiobooks because I'm shit with with physical books. Hmm. I, I will check my ways someday, but yeah, yeah, really enjoying them. What's yeah. the narration like? Is it because uh, I'm I mine's going to be an audiobook too, and I think narration's important with audiobooks. I've put down what would yeah. necessarily be a good book because the narration is crap. Uh, yeah <laughs> yeah the narration on this is superb like just so good um i, I read a couple of reviews online and um, people say the same thing i can't find out who exactly it is so i don't think it's it's someone popular um no one seems to know exactly who this person is but um whoever it is they've done an absolutely fantastic job uh, yeah. like they've got the characters down they've got like the they've got like the different voices for different characters for now, sure and all for sure stuff. And yeah, 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 it's it's really good. Yeah, I think you've listened to the same one, haven't you, Dan? Yes, I did. I've um, yeah. I'm um, like uh, same with you. I'm like mid midway through the second second book of the the audio thing. But uh, it, as you said, it adds a lot. Even if you've not even listened to the audio book and read the book, I think it adds so much layer to the the Lord of the Rings world that like. Like, uh, but and you can see why they cut out Tom Bombadil, um, even I think though Peter he Jackson was cool. Give a reason. I don't remember it offhand, but he did give a reason in interviews about it. So we'll have to look ah. that up. Nice. Um, uh, Tom, do you want to go next? Because you mentioned it's a podcast as well, so we can. Oh, uh, it's an audiobook. Oh, oh sorry, uh, uh, audiobook. Sorry. Um. So yeah, I um. 
I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it last year or it was this year I've read it, but earlier in the year I read The Martian, mm-hmm. but I've since read one of Andy Weir's other books called Project Hail Mary, okay. and I finished that recently. Very hard sci-fi, and I think I've been getting into hard sci-fi now. Mm. Because um, I'm not so into things like Star Wars. I think it's a bit too, it's a bit too whimsical. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Somehow, Palpatine. Too mainstream. I, I, yeah. No, no. I like the hard sci-fi, which is like very rooted in re- reality. Yeah. I get and it. Um, Project Hail Mary's that. So just mm. to kind of go over the plot a little bit without spoiling it. Um, around the start of the book. Uh, well, first of all, the book's told in two... It goes from present to past, and it was the same in The Martian. So it talks... He's talking about his time on this spaceship, and he works. Uh, he wakes up with amnesia and doesn't remember anything, and he's being cared for by this, like, onboard computer. And... Um, he slowly remembers things, and whenever he remembers something, it does kind of a flashback, ah. and then there'll be a chapter talking about something that happened in the past. Because at the beginning, he doesn't even remember his name or how he got there. But to go, because this is right in the beginning, basically there is this world-ending cataclysm that's about to happen, in and. Earth scientists who are pretty much at the stage we are today in real life hmm. have to come up with a solution to the problem. Um, basically, the sun is going to be destroyed. Ah. Uh, I won't explain how, but it's going to be destroyed. And so the flashbacks go into how this guy like discovered this and how they're going to fix it Hmm. and the current stuff uh, where he's on the ship is him working out how the ship works and how he can save Earth Ah. but I don't want to spoil it but something something happens which is really cool Hmm. um and he talks, he's always, whenever he's explaining anything, whenever he's explaining anything, because it's all done from a first-person perspective, um, he always explains the science behind it, and half of it I don't understand, in fairness, but he does go through it quite well, hmm. and whilst it's very, like, speculative, I'd say, it it makes sense. Everything he does makes sense, and he explains it. Very much like in the Martian book, um, how he explains every step of his survival on Mars and what he needs to do and when he works something out. Because, basically, it's it's a series of him going, ah, crap, I'm, I'm dead. There's no way I'm going to get out of this. And then he works out something that he can do to save himself. And, mm. oh, it's just very enjoyable. And whilst I didn't enjoy um, Andy Weir's second book, because it didn't take the same style, this third book, uh, Project Hail Mary, is really good. And I hear it's getting made into a movie soon. Oh, cool. So hopefully that's good, because I'm definitely going to the cinema to see it. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I listened to the audiobook, the narration, really good. Um, it's a, it's an actor, I forgot his name, but he's really good at the narration. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend. Uh, a great audiobook to listen to. And I'm, I'm glad I listened to it. I'm looking forward to his future work. Nice. Uh, right, Dan, do you want to close out the book segment with your choice? Okay, so my the book uh, I read this year, uh, 100 Years of Solitude. By Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Ma- Marquez? I hope I, I said that right. But uh, yeah, uh, what can I say about this book? It's 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 by a Colombian author, and um, and basically it just tells the story. It's like a multi 
there's stories within stories in this and it's like so it, it's a multi-generational thing where it's about the ben, buendia family and you go through uh all the characters down down the line and there's a lot of like uh, there's a lot of like names that like some of the names do repeat so like uh uh like like, like so, so with like, the same names of s different characters but um but what while that it does sound complicated you, it's honestly it's one of the best books i have ever read it it's uh, every word that that is said in that is perfect it is in place and it's it's got this sort of magical realism th style to it and it's 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 hard to kind of convey it's like a very it's it's, it's very dreamlike but it's also grounded as well and mm. it's um and there's nothing like it there's and i you know i i there's nothing like this book and i <laughs> it is I, I i love it i absolutely love it and i just i and i fell in love with like kind of world literature for that for that matter i felt like hmm. you know and and i loved it that much i uh i'm i've picked up a, a couple of other like uh latin american books and like i picked up his other book uh called love in the time of cholera so gonna look forward to that um uh, and uh but, but yeah i i uh, it's, it's hard to explain but like uh, you you the the character all the characters are really different as well and you know there's there's a lot of uh um uh, you know they build up the town there's a lot of conflict hmm. war um then there's prosperity, romance, a uh, lot of drama, hmm. scientific pursuits, alchemy, astronomy, and just and and strange rituals and mysticism. And hmm. it, that's the thing. As I said, there's stories within stories with this, and yeah. you can't go wrong. And and I think that's the uh, what I uh, what I love about. Um, this book is that it exists and it, it just makes me really appreciate reading books and um yeah so that's all i can say is go check it out and and just um you know pick try something that you'd something new and it's 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 funny it's tragic it's hmm. it's everything that you want out of a book and um yeah yeah so cool. that's all i can say really uh all right yes um right let's move on to our penultimate uh category then so this one's a bit more vague um might not take as long to be honest because i, I th this was this is one of the ones that i was like i'm not really sure what to answer here but that is your favorite thing uh, mainly internet based, but it doesn't have to be if you couldn't think of anything. You may, your favorite internet thing of twenty twenty one. So, I'll start because again, as I said, mine's very vague, so we won't discuss it long probably. And that is the fact that manga took off really big this year, uh, just as a mm. well, like in the West <clears throat> or yeah. So I mean, a, a good example of this, and Tim, you've you've seen it firsthand too. Uh, I like to I like to browse in a bookshop in the UK called W H Smith, um, and you know I like to browse the manga, the comics, and stuff. And two different times this year, I have seen a sign next to their manga section saying, "Please be patient. Manga has had like a significantly higher rate of interest this year. As such, there's like there's not as much um, supply. So please be patient whilst we get more." So oh, just, yeah. 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 just the fact that, you know, manga is so big this year that, uh, you know, it's it's become a big thing, uh, you know, like big enough that it's uh, popular with people who are generally into comics. Uh, if you want to go down a rabbit hole, uh, 
compare manga seals to comic seals in the West, and uh, <laughs> comics were fun that once. Is, so, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, do you, uh, are you not in this kind of camp of other people at the moment who are kind of going down a core, kind of quote unquote gatekeeping scenario where they're like, oh, everyone's fucking getting into manga now. They're going to start. They're going to start gearing it more towards the fucking normies and it's going to lose its charm. No. So are you more in the camp of, no, it's for everyone. Everyone getting into it is, is a yeah, good thing. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, I undoubtedly agree. with anything, you're always going to get, the, the more popular it is with everyone, you, like certain things are going to come out where it's, it's like, look at video games, for example, right? There are very, very casual sort of like games that clearly aren't for us you know like in in the same sense that like movies and stuff like that so i mean i'm sure at some point there might be a kind of like oh we need to do this because it's popular with everyone now in the west but i don't know i I feel like honestly there's so many manga series that like that yeah exactly and having that kind of boost will just make there be more availability to formal offshoots to go into more yeah. specific mm. kind of niches. So yeah, I'm in the same in, I'm, in, in the same kind of as you are now. I'm scared I mean, first of all, yeah, I, I'm a completely against gatekeeping, opening up to everyone. Everyone should experience manga because hmm. it's great. I don't think it is going to get No, uh, so I in I, the I... same way as Marvel, because Japan makes manga for japan and yes. anyone else who, lo- who likes it so is... if if um, i had to typify this i would say it's i think a little bit of a fad in that sort of because everyone's been stuck indoors the last two years ostensibly i think it's easy that they'd come across someone on youtube you know so not an anime youtuber even but would be like oh i, I watched this uh I read this manga recently it's like what What's manga? What? So you know, it it might be due to that, but no, I I just think it's like it's neat. yeah, I mean, it's well, it's neat, and honestly, will hopefully lead to more like um. Well, uh, I bought my first manga this year. Ah, there we are. See, um, uh, Berserk Volume One, and it's a absolutely massive book. Um, but I've I've been. I've been meaning to get it for a, a, a long time, as uh, Red hmm. uh, will will, uh, will will say. Um, but um, and I was like, oh boy, I can't. This is going to take ages. And I read it uh, in the space of like two <laughs> days. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully, we're going to get more localizations and support as well. Because a very good example hmm. here is. Um, <clears throat> so I personally don't own any, but my nephew does, which are the JoJo mangas. Now, ah. notoriously, for decades, there was no real JoJo localization over here. I mean, there were some, yeah. but there's there's the very popular What a Beautiful Duang uh, thing, where basically the fandom was purely fan translated, and the translations were bad. Yeah. So... But for uh, like currently, I think they're at part five of JoJo now. Like, so even if it's just getting the classics localized because there's been an uptick in sales, I think it's yeah. going to do wonders for Western manga fans. You know, uh, in yeah. in the long run. Mm. But yeah. Um. Who would like to go next? Yeah, go on. I'll uh, kind of on the same theme. So I've I've put my internet figure of the year as Sea Dog VA <laughs> because I started watching him a lot this year, and oh boy, the content he makes is absolutely fantastic. So there's like living your dream. He is uh, yeah. he's living my dream. He's he's a local boy living the dream, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm a little bit jealous, but. Um, oh. Basically, he's done, he does loads of videos and mostly he collabs with people. And there's a series of people out there, uh, a series of people. There's a few people out in Japan who have all been making videos together for a long time now. Um, 
but he's the one that kind of anchors it all for me. Hmm. So a lot of his videos, he does a load where he visits hotels and they'd be like really expensive hotels or something in Japan. And it's a great way of like indulging yourself in the culture. Uh, not mm. to sound like a weeb, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, I think we're uh, past that point. <laughs> oh, we're past that point, yeah. Um, I mean, the other thing he's been doing recently is cr- uh, crane machines. Um, hmm. And he like goes against people, like and other YouTubers. He's also and... a contributor on the Trust, Trash Taste podcast, which is... Yes, he's on the much. Trash Taste uh, podcast. And which has collabed, is also a great listen. And has collabed with a VTuber several times. Yes. Uh, there, there. So I mean, <laughs> that's bigger than several. I think uh, on almost a daily basis. At well, this point, yeah, surely. yeah. It's, it's it's just a duo now, really. But yeah, um, yeah. It, it's funny because um, they almost have. Um, he collabs with Iron Mouse a lot, and um, they have like this chemistry between them uh, mm. when they're doing streams. It's very entertaining, and I can't stop watching. Um, but I like all of his content. I like I like trash taste. I like his um, his stuff where he just goes to hotels, plays card games. Mm-hmm. There was one recently which Rigged recommended to me where he um, the the figure challenge. They go they go spend fun. like what is it like three grand each? Yeah, on figures. And that was really good that's the to dream. watch as well. That, that's the dream. The one where he went to work in the game bar was fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh yeah, I um, I saw that one. That was uh, that was funny, but uh, genuinely nice bloke and uh, yeah, he... pumping out the content because he's doing really. He must be doing really well now. Yeah, um, and he I seems think... sincere in it, which I really appreciate. So oh, the, yeah, the, the, very... there are YouTubers that get into it because it's popular, and it's like, oh, this is great for the algorithm. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he seems like you know he cares, which is nice. Mm. Um, right. Who who would like to go next with their? No, I'll go ahead. Um, uh, so all I just put down was because I was like. Because favorite internet thing, and I was like, "Oh, that's really open ended." But yeah, uh, the funny. Honestly, I'm going to say the Suez Canal memes. <laughs> wow. Okay, I, on a laugh field, not what I was expecting, but fair enough. I just not thought. Cool. I mean, just I say the memes. Just like the event that happened was, yeah, the Suez Canal. Uh, just got you know. Just got the big massive ship just got jammed and <laughs> caused <laughs> a lot of problems. And... Good proportion. I mean, I then goes through the Suez Canal and he block this guy. You just <laughs> well, whoever was driving it made a big mistake and it it's, it 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 had the... it had slight repercussions for uh, for a very small Only amount slight. of uh, slight. <laughs> but it was just one of those like. Like oh like oh th- th- you know you just watch the news like oh so this and you're like wait what a yeah a big big shipping container just <laughs> and you're just like in the Suez Canal yes uh right and and yeah and there's just the memes that followed from that and it was just like you just like yep this was an event in history that happened that yeah. a that caused problems and but if anything um it did uh like that event... to something about ourselves you know like deep no, down, no no I mean... no 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 <laughs> legit it did actually cause some good things because because people um found out like they were like they were looking into just shipping hmm. in general and they found that uh that they um, emit about as much uh, pollution as uh, the country of Germany, yeah. which is like uh, something like that, and which is a lot. And and so um, they've they've actually made efforts into um, you know reducing that amount now. Um, I mean, I mean to be fair, you know, the, the aim is to reduce as many emissions as possible. But they were like, oh God, you know, just shipping. Big massive containers on boats, 
um, causes a lot of problems. Let's try and fix that issue. So if anything, while it did cause a lot of problems uh, in the Suez Canal, it brought out new solutions. So wow, well, um, there we are. It was how <laughs> fragile, like everything is to yes. be. Like yeah. one well one mistake that someone made on a canal blocked a massive proportion of world shipping from getting to its destination for a good few days. It's like, ooh, God, yeah. Uh, worrying, almost, you know? It's it quite worrying. It is. Right, well. It's perfect time for it to happen as well. Like, it sounded ridiculous on top of everything else that happened this year. So, yeah. yeah. But, like the... um. Like the cherry on top of uh, 2021. Yeah. Very fragile world we live in, isn't it? Indeed. Um, right, Tim, do you want to finish us off with the favourite internet event of this year? I will. I'll finish you all off with the most exciting thing that happened this year for me. Because the most exciting thing that happened this year for me, the best internet thing, was Minecraft coming on Game Pass. <laughs> yeah! Hey, there we oh, go. Bloody yeah. fantastic. So I was I was one of these people. I never played Minecraft before. I was, was very for, surprised. That's for fucking babies. That's for so... nudes and babies, and I'm neither of those things. I'm a very mature and responsible adult, so I had no, you know, fucking need to play Minecraft. But then I saw it was coming on Game Pass. I was like, ah, oh, oh, that looks fun. I'll, I'll give it a go with um with with you guys. And um, and then I got really excited by the idea. I was like, oh yeah, I can like build stuff. Oh yeah, that sounds actually really cool. And then we started playing, and um, yeah, I, I, I can't stop. I have an addiction. I think part of the reason I never got into it, even though I say it's because I was too cool for it, is because I knew that once I started playing it, I will never stop. I have a very addictive personality when it comes to um, creative games and games hmm. in general. So I was like, this is the kind of thing that I could sync. Because uh, going back on other games I've played, you know, I'll sync like. I think I got to like 999 hours on my Pokemon games, just doing Oof. EVs and shit and doing all the side quests on Pokemon and I won't get started on theatre rhythm and rhythm games. But um, So yeah, I was like, uh, this this is going to be too much for me. If I start on this, uh, it'll eat away at my life. And that's exactly what's happened. Hey. So it's fantastic. <laughs> hey. And there's an update as well. The fact that it's been out so long, it's been out so long and they're still pouring out updates for it and really like cool updates that bring really interesting yeah. things into it. And the fact that they put it on Game Pass. It's just been a good year for Minecraft. Mm. <laughs> very, of... very 2021. Yeah. <laughs> very, very recent and uh, I mean, modern thing. To I think it's had a bit of a resurgence recently, Resurgen? though, in terms of you as playing it. Not just because of the Game Pass thing. I think it's partly because of COVID, but... Yeah, well, that yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's, it's definitely mean, I, I, a 2021 topic, I think, as Tim said. Mm. Oh, Tim's uh, Tim is actually 11 years old. He has one of those green creep yeah. hoodies, and he, he is dream. His dream, if any of you can fulfil it, donate him some money. He wants to go to that's Mayan Con. Uh, so so ne- what the point of the mask is. Next. Uh, <laughs> Next year, Tim said he's heard of this Fortnite game as well that people have been playing, so he's going to gonna give that a go. He's going to be dab. <laughs> oh, no, I draw the line somewhere. Come um, on. I haven't got any uh, Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, as, as we leave the topic of 2021 behind, we now look forward to 2022, the year on our horizon, and possibly the year that this podcast is coming out depends when it goes up that is what are we looking forward to in 2022 now i won't lie this was a difficult one for me um really because i don't keep up with a lot of things like i don't really keep up much with games don't keep up with anime or books or anything much like i'll hear of things but it'll always be in the context like oh that sounds pretty cool but i mean as you've seen with my nominations for pretty much everything, I'll happily read something from 30 years ago, watch an anime that came in 2011. So I'm going to keep it kind of in theme with the rest of my channel here. And the thing that I'm looking forward to most next year is more VTuber statue slash Nendroid stuff. So yes. specifically, I have the Gargura Nendroid on offer, uh, on pre-order, sorry. 
I have the Corona and Okayu pop-up parade statues. And if it goes up for pre-order next year, which it probably will, I will be pre-ordering the Nianas and Android as well. But, uh, oh, yeah, yeah nice. I, I think that's that's the things I'm most looking forward to. There's nothing, uh, you know, a major event or anything I'm looking forward to. So, yeah. Um, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, that's a... Uh... It's a good one. I've yeah. I've pre-ordered a good uh, portion of YouTube statues now, and yeah. uh, I'm looking forward oh, to going. Exactly. them actually coming. Because the thing with the thing with those like figures, they go up for pre-order like six months or yeah. more before they're even out. I think we pre-ordered the the Gura September Android. September twenty twenty one. It's still so. not out. It's yeah, not out. I mean it's it, it's pretty standard though. Japanese pre-orders yeah. are pretty much like that. I mean, Papa Parade is notably quick because it's only three months. So, uh, expecting the Anna's in twenty thirty. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not holding no hope, but you know, it's it's going to be fun. I think. Hopefully, so. we get. Uh, I I wouldn't mind the more recall IP one. That's yeah, a, I, are they're going to branch out? You know, assuming sales are good, which they will be. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's so. Keep an eye out on imminent imminent tortoise because once they're out, I will be putting up a review. <laughs> He's yeah. not sponsored by Deck I Am. I mean, swears. That's yes. the dream. That's the dream. One day. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Who who would like to go next with a uh, excitement for next year? Yeah, go on. Oh. Go. go on. Sorry, Tim. I ruined it again. Um, Ye. Yeah. So, I'll be honest, I'm not mega excited for next year. So, oh God, I've good. put... Okay, good start. <laughs> what am I looking forward to next year? Nothing. nothing. I've put one thing I'm cautiously optimistic for. Mm-hmm. One thing oh. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to quite a bit. Okay. Um, and another thing that I want to be proven wrong on. So... I think I know what one of them is, and I think you are going to be proven wrong. Go ahead. Um. So one of the one, the thing that I'm cautiously optimistic for is the Lord of the Rings Nick, um, Amazon Prime series, okay. which is out okay. at the second half of next year. Uh, it's September or something it's due for. But... It's said to be the biggest budget ever for a TV series. And I've seen some good things. So one of the things they're doing is they're keeping in style with the films. Okay. So, for example, they haven't specifically said what, but, for example, the guards in Gondor will have that same, like, kind of armor and stuff like that. So I feel like they're trying to make it in the current universe and the stuff we've mm. already seen in The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. So it's... Okay. It, that kind of excites me. And whilst it's not made by Peter Jackson, mm. I am hoping that it's uh, that it's going to be up to the standard. So I'm looking forward to that. And I mean, we've had our fancy series with Game of Thrones which went down the pan mm. later on. But it started yeah. good, so I'm hoping... It started that very this, good, yeah. I'm hoping this Lord of the Rings series, which is said to be a prequel from what I understand, Yeah. Um, I hope it's good. I hope mm. it's good. So I'm cautiously optimistic for that. The thing that I'm looking forward to, and yeah. I feel like I'm going to rain on one of us here when I say mm. Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Dan said this. I was watching the last year's one and Dan said, what are you looking forward to in 2021? Yeah. <laughs> Dan said Elden Ring. It's, oh, uh, I, I, I mean, I have a feeling Sorry. there might be an overlap, so, you know, we'll... Uh... <laughs> okay. And so it's, what... It's, um, I think it's, a, it's either February or March it's out. Dan February. Yeah, you know exactly. There you go. There you go. So, what's exact date? What's your third (laughs) pick, Tom? Because I think this is going to be doubled over. So, I think. uh... All right. Um, something I'm not. I really want to be proven wrong that it's a good. It's going to be good, but Pokemon Legends Arceus, and okay. Oh. I have a feeling. 
it's going to be a letdown. Um, mm. There's stuff, like, there's just stuff I'm seeing from these trailers that feels a bit casualized. And there was things like, I felt like the frame rate was really low. Hmm. And yeah, it was. It's not that shingling was holding on for dear life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was only just surviving on the console. And like people are saying, the breath of the wild of Pokemon, but it, do- it doesn't look as good. Hmm. It just doesn't. I wa- I wanted it to pop out of the screen to me, you know. Yeah. And I really want to be proven wrong. I want to. I want to play it and play this amazing game that we've always dreamed of a Pokemon, but I'm worried yeah. it's not going to be good. And I don't know if Tim... When you <laughs> when you said you had one that you were going to... You, you, you thought you might be proven wrong about, I thought you were going to say Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, it was like, the cycle, the cycle is starting! <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah, that that's one a... not... that's a... No. That's another open world game, isn't it? Uh... Uh, that, that's a long know. way off yet though I reckon that's 2022 nice to, be, to be honest it would be nice to prove, prove him wrong on that as well but we'll see we'll see, we'll see. but uh, yeah. yeah I'll leave it at that right so Tim well, or, or Dan who would like to go next well I'll probably go ahead because uh, yeah the thing I was looking forward to is same thing I said last year was Elden Ring. But, <laughs> but to be honest, to be honest, last year, right, everyone was like, Dan, that will never, ever come out. Like like Winds of Winter, right? And it was, was like, a concept. It was a concept at that point as well. Yes. <laughs> it was a theory. But, yeah. but then but no, 2021 that... changed that. And, yeah. And I was like, no, it is a real thing. It is coming out. It's in February, <laughs> and I was and I was just like, yes, finally. Um, but I will say another thing I'm really looking forward to um, is Warhammer 40k uh, Dark Tide, hmm. which is uh, I really like Vermintide too. Uh, I yeah. like killing all the rats, and um, and I really like the the world of Warhammer. Like forty k especially, so uh, to play the to play that Dark Tide is something I'm really looking forward to. But to be honest, Elden yeah. Ring is oh, I can't wait. I can't I mean, wait. Nice. We've I had we had an actual what was it a closed beta where people yeah. Play so it it does exist. Like uh, it does. It's absolutely it probably is now. I I know Dan has picked technically the same thing twice, but it, it yeah as Dan said, like the year has changed so much about news for that game mm. that it's like yeah. All thanks to a certain Canadian man. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. know. Canadian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't know. You no, wouldn't Je- know. Jeff Keighley is very, uh, very, very, you know, understated on that. Yeah, he's he's the the hero we don't deserve. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Well, that just leaves us with Tim, I believe. Yeah. Um. I I I, I do have things I'm looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Not a fucking doomer like he's. I was gonna say <laughs> Pokemon, but um, Tom's beaten me to it. Um, but because I'm a professional. I've got I've got backup stored, so you know, ah. I, 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 I can Shots get these fired. things in place. I I'm a little bit excited for Pokemon, but yeah, I, I, again, like 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 everyone else has said, I'm not getting my hopes up. They've proven us hmm. wrong with Diamond and Pearl Remix. So what I, what I am looking forward to, two things I'm looking forward to, um, and they both kind of recently come to my attention. <clears throat> I am looking forward to um, Bleach continuing. Ah, a yes! Nice, shiny trailer of Bleach, and it's really rekindled my love of, of that anime. It's the one like, of those... Oh, the live action, right? No, 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 not live action. They're, they're continuing the anime. Um, okay. But the two big anime I watched when I was a kid was Naruto and Bleach. And Naruto, it was enjoyable when hmm. I was a kid, but looking yeah. back... Like you, you try watching it now, and it, it hasn't held up well for me. I'm sure other people still enjoy it, but it got to a point where I was like, I, oh, I can't. Hmm. Bleach, however, I don't know if it's because I haven't tried to go back to it, but I, it, it, I still have an inkling of like, 
wanting to get back into that because there were there were it, you know it's it's shown and it's it's very um basic but there's something about it that uh, still intrigues me and it, it, seeing that trailer for them continuing it has rekindled me and i'm not even up to date i need to i need to finish off the anime that already exists um but yeah it got me a little bit excited to mm. uh to go back and and maybe get back into that world because yeah bleach yeah. bleach had a, a bit more of a charm to it than naruto naruto was you know it was it was very kind of yeah it's it's hmm. just Naruto. It's 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 what you expect. But Bleach had this kind of weird. We it had more of a weirdness to it than Naruto. Yes. I would yeah. T T K more. Um, he... Especially. Yeah. Yeah. T T K was kind of injected more style into it. Yeah. Like, I guess it's more stylistic than Naruto. I would say, and that's always one that got me into it a little bit. So yeah, I'm excited for that. The thing I'm excited about that only came to pass on like the. the latter half of christmas day is um we got a very 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 brief trailer for some upcoming news and i'm oh it's been it's been a hey. while since i've been excited for news the last album was good but i didn't get super excited for it um but but, but the next album sounds a little bit a little bit metal and i'm like Ooh, oh sweet what, I like metal wow a little it, oh I, I i assume you guys haven't heard but um they no. did like an instagram thing and it was like uh, it was it was just him in his car and he, he Elmi in his car playing the song, and I was like, "Oh, that's wow, that's new. That is, and um, it sounds yeah, it sounds sounds heavy. It sounds interesting. And as much as I've enjoyed the last couple of albums, I'm not in this kind of group of people who are like, oh they've done their shit. I, I really, really enjoyed the last couple of albums, mm. even though um, they've kind of gone in a different direction to usual. But yeah. this sounds, uh, yeah, this sounds. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited, even more excited, I would say, because um, I am a big fan, as you know." Yeah, damn! I I didn't know about that. I'll I'll, I'll I'm I'm going to go look it up as soon as we stop recording. I think this. Um. Right. Well. And on that somber note, we must say goodbye, both to twenty twenty one. And to this podcast, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah, um, I think that wraps everything up. Really, it's it's been yeah. it's been a fun one. It's been a year. It's been a year, and uh, what have we enjoyed in our year? <laughs> well, let's get into the topic. So the first one, uh, so you're going back, <laughs> go, going back say, to the time a, loop thing. It's been a, 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 yeah. a, a slight improvement over last hmm. year. Yeah. I would say. I, uh, I actually got to meet people hey, for a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I, I think and I also, meet and, and I got to meet these guys, so... There I we are. It comes, it comes and swims around about, I guess. Yeah. 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 No, he, he d- he's never seen us. <laughs> never again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, right, uh, well, on that note then, I think we're all going to go off now and create memories for 2022. And I hope everyone listening has enjoyed also and that they're also going to create memories. Also, let me know in the comments below. What were your favourite from those topics that we discussed? Because I do genuinely like to see what other people have been doing in the year. Because, you know, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's been fun. Well, right. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for joining me. And thank you all very much for listening. Uh, if you'd like to say your goodbyes. Uh, goodbye. Um, goodbye 2021. Um, good- goodbye youth. <laughs> well, oh, that is well, true. Uh, two of us uh, are entering our thirties next year. So. Oh God! Yeah. There we are. While we end on that light Christ. note, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys very much yeah, for watching. And remember, time is ceaseless. And the only, only really, the only reason we use time is because it's a measurement of decay. Right. We'll see you guys next year. Goodbye. <laughs>